Hey, uh, there you go again. You're most welcome to this series of short uh, video teachings. My name is Mustafa Abubakar and I am a pastor at Christ Bible Church here in Mombasa Island in Kenya. And we will continue with our study on the holiness of God, on the holiness of God, one of the attributes and the character uh, of our God that we are to serve and love and follow and trust and, and obey and fear and honor. Now, in our last video, we considered and uh, learned together um, on the primary definition of the holiness of God, the primary meaning of the holiness of God. Now, in this video, we are going to learn and, and study together on the secondary definition or the secondary meaning of the holiness of God. And we will uh, dive in straight away. And as I told you in, in our last video, that uh, as much as possible, I will try to be very, very plain, very, very simple, very, very basic, and very, very straightforward. I will avoid all theological uh, jargons. Now, let's dive into the secondary definition or the secondary meaning of the holiness of God. What does the Bible mean uh, secondarily when it says that our God is a holy God? Now, the secondary definition or the secondary meaning of the holiness of God relates to uh, his morality or his ethics. When the Bible says that God is holy secondarily, it means that this God is pure in his nature, in his being, uh, that he is perfect, that he is without sin. In his nature and in his being, our God is pure, he is perfect, he is without sin. He is without evil. He is without any wickedness or iniquity. Our God is blameless. Our God is sinless in his nature and in his being. Now, not only in his nature and in his being, is our Lord pure and holy and without evil, without wickedness and iniquity, but also in his thoughts. Our God is also pure and blameless and sinless, uh, as well as in his emotions and feelings and attitudes and desires. Our God is sinless and blameless as well. Uh, in his speech, the words that he speaks, our Lord is pure and perfect and blameless and sinless without sin or wickedness or evil. Uh, as well as in his deeds, the deeds that he does, the actions that he undertakes, they are all without sin. They are all without any wickedness or iniquity. Or iniquity sorry. So our God is pure, holy, blameless, sinless in his nature, in his being, in his thoughts, in his feelings and emotions and desires, in his speech, the words that he speaks, as well as in his actions and in his deeds. Now, this God who is without sin, without wickedness, without evil, will never fall into sin. The God of the heavens and the earth will never one day fall into sin. From eternity past to eternity future, our God will remain to be holy. From everlasting to everlasting, he will remain to be without sin. He will forever remain without sin, without evil, without iniquity, and without wickedness. And because of that, he will not have any fellowship or communion or relationship with sinners. Because he is a holy God, cannot have any fellowship, any communion, or any relationship with sinners. In fact, as we shall see from the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 5 and 11, verse 5, because he is holy, he hates all evildoers with a passion. He hates all sinners with a passion. He hates all those who live a sinful life with a passion. Now, let's read uh, Psalms, chapter 92, verse 15. Psalms 92, verse 15. The word of God says, Proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. You hear that? 
there is no wickedness in him, in his nature, in his being, in his character. There is no wickedness. There is no sin. There is no filthiness. There is no iniquity in him. There is no unrighteousness in him. He is a holy God, morally and ethically perfect. We read from Job as well, chapter 34. Job chapter 34. I'll read verse 10 and then I will skip verse 11 and read verse 12. Job chapter 34 verse 10. So, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil. Far be it from God to do evil. From the Almighty to do wrong in his deeds, in his action, whatever he does is pure, perfect, blameless, sinless. He cannot do evil. Then verse 12 of the same chapter, 34 verse 12, the word of God says, It is unthinkable that God would do wrong. It's unthinkable that God will do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Don't even think that one day our God will do wrong. Never shall never happen. And then Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. He does no wrong. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice. And every new day, he does not fail. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. So it's clear from the scriptures that this God is morally and ethically pure and perfect in his nature. No evil. No sin, no wickedness, no iniquity in his thoughts. No sin, no wickedness, no iniquity in his feelings, in his emotions, in his desires, in his attitudes, in his speech, the words that he speaks, even in his actions. There is no sin, there is no wickedness, there is no iniquity, and he will never fall into sin. Never. From everlasting to everlasting, from everlasting, to everlasting he will continue to to be holy and pure and blameless. And he will never, never, not even once, have any fellowship or communion or relationship with sinners. And I'll read with you the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 5. It tells us that because this God is holy, he even hates sinners, those who live in iniquity and wickedness and transgression and sin. He hates them. Psalms chapter 5, verse 5. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. Because God is holy, because he is sinless, he hates all who do wrong. In Psalms 11, verse 5. If you hear some drizzling, it's, it's raining out there. It has just started raining. Psalms 11, verse 5. The God of God says, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. He hates with a passion. And he hates uh, uh, sinful people and wicked people and transgressors. He hates them because he is a holy God. You remember what happened when Adam and Eve fell into sin in Genesis chapter 3? He chased them out of the garden. He banished them out of the garden because he is a holy God. He cannot have, never will he have any fellowship or communion with sinners. And let me say this, uh, a brethren, brother and sister, who is watching this short video. If you're watching this video and you know for sure that you have lived a sinful life, a wicked life, a filthy life, a lost life, a barren and wasted life, I will ask you today that if you die today, because this God is a holy God, he will judge you and condemn you and damn you and punish you in hell. Because he is a holy God, he will not invite you or accept you in his presence in heaven. Because he's a holy God, he cannot have any fellowship or communion or relationship with you rather, but instead 
He will throw you outside into the darkness, uh, uh, into the fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth out there forever and ever. So I will call upon you and plead with you and beg you and urge you, please, if you know you've lived a sinful life, a wicked life, a lost life, a barren life, I'll call you and ask you today to repent of your sins and believe and trust and collapse in the hands of the only Savior who is Jesus Christ. And He's so gracious. He is so merciful. He is so kind and loving and compassionate. He will cleanse you and wash you and forgive you of all your iniquities. Take them away to Himself. And instead, he will clothe you with his righteousness, with his perfect obedience, with all his perfect deeds. And on that day when you stand before the judgment throne of this Christ, Holy God, will be able to enter into his, into his glorious kingdom, into heaven. Not because of your own deeds, but because you have been clothed with the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is the secondary definition of the holiness of God, the secondary meaning of the holiness of God. We will stop it at that, and then in the next video, we will consider a few applications uh, uh, from this uh, study. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.